So, good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to have a presentation on the 31st path to help us get in the mindset and have an understanding of what to expect and the sort of things that had happened on the path working for the 31st pass, which is the pass of judgment, or in Crowley's deck, the new Eon, which both have a, a very similar idea. Now the path runs from Malkuth, where we start, up to the Sephra of Hod, which Hod is the intellect, thinking, mercurial, those sorts of things. And it's the 31st path, and I like to think of it in terms of the call to adventure. Now the call to adventure is one of Joseph Campbell's stages of the hero's journey. Joseph Campbell um, looked at, I guess he was an anthropologist, and he looked at the myths and stories that people told them, each other around the world, across history, across cultures, and identified certain commonalities. Now it's not the same. He was a religious scholar at Sarah Lawrence College. And okay. He established the field of comparative religion. Oh, okay. Excellent. I'm, I'm glad you can fill that in. Um, so these stages of the hero's journey. That's not to say that every story has them, has all of them, or that a story is no good if it doesn't. But it, it, he came up with a very interesting tool that we can use to analyze our stories and experiences that we have. Now, when Star Wars was originally created, he worked with George Lucas on the original, the very first Star, Star Wars movie. And it really shows in the various stages of the, the movie how um, Joseph Campbell's influence. So the 31st path, it just works out also that there are 22 major arcana in a tarot deck, which means 22 paths for us to do path working on. And there are 22 stages of the hero's journey. So they fit together flawlessly. And the 31st path works to be the call to adventure. So you remember in Star Wars, and pretty much a great many stories and myths and movies and things that we enjoy. There is the movie or the story will start out with our protagonist in their everyday life, doing their everyday things, and something happens. And their, their world is turned upside down and they're given a call to adventure. They're called to leave their ordinary life and to seek out something higher. And the case of uh, Star Wars, Luke Skywalker was living on this moisture farm, going through his everyday life, and when the Empire came in and disrupted him, um, he met with Obi-Wan, which was the, obviously something like the Hermit card, the meeting with the Fierce Guardian, and said, hey, you, you need to come with me and join the rebellion. And of course he was like, no, I have to stay here, I have to farm moisture and work on droids. And then you know, eventually he had no choice. He had to leave his ordinary everyday life and seek out adventure. So the 31st path, it represents this sort of experience. The 31st path of judgment of the new Aeon in its entirety at its core represents a change of life circumstances, making a commitment to a higher calling, a firm decision. So the idea of judgment, the idea of a new eon, a new time. And then we can get into the ideas that are associated with the path as well. The letter Shin, which is a, uh, you know, the Hebrew letter associated with the path means tooth. Okay. So I wanna, um, I wanna add in a little bit here about um, the reason that um, he couldn't, when Luke went to go visit Obi-Wan mm -hmm. and he was called and he said, no, no, I don't want to do this, right? We see this motif all the time. I'm not worthy. I'm not ready. 
I'm not good enough, I don't have the skills that I need, or I just don't want to. Which is called refusal of the call, which is another stage. Right, it's, it's very common that we don't want to change. And so then he, then after that, he came home and what did he find that made it so that he had no choice? The old world was gone, right? His family had been killed, his home, right? Yeah, his family was, was killed, his home was destroyed, and so he had no choice. Everything was wiped out. So the old world was gone. It no longer existed. And so he had no choice but to set out and embark on this new adventure because there was no, there was no going back. Um, I also wanted to go back to Joseph Campbell and talk about him for a minute. You know, he, he, what he did was he, he taught classes on mythology and he taught classes on religion. And he looked at a lot of different um, tradition, both traditional European religions and non-traditional religions, such as just from everywhere that he could get his hands on. So it was like a religious anthropology of sorts. Mm. Everything that he could get his hands on in a lot of places that other scholars were not necessarily drawing their stories from. And um, he was doing that at Sarah Lawrence College. And he was finding repetitive motifs again and again and again that we constantly find these particular motifs of um, going out and doing something that, that's bigger than we are, having a very specific set of adventures along the way, and then having a very specific uh, result. And, um, and so he called that the hero with a thousand faces, and he called that the hero's journey. And they say that he didn't intentionally parallel it with the tarot. Oh, no, no, he didn't intentionally do that. That it just so happened to work out that way. But the connection has been made afterwards, and it was definitely made when they created the Star Wars trilogy. Yeah, he worked with George Lucas, at least on the definitely first beginning. movie. Okay, so, are you ready to go on to the next slide? Yes. There you go. Okay, so the 31st path, uh, some keywords. So we're talking about the letter Shen, tooth. Um, that's very important to consider because the Hebrew letters are very definitive um, on the paths on the tree. The letter Shen is one of three letters that are called mother letters that are very central to the story of, the story in Sefer Yitzira of the creation of the universe by the letters. And so the letter Shin represents the fiery element. So we're considering transmutation, processing, purification, idea of chemistry, path of inquiry and thought, um, familial and social bonds, connection to others, health, discernment, and very importantly, burning away illusion, decision-making, and making a firm commitment, a decision. So that's especially the last part, making the firm commitment, that's very much part of the hero's journey, when it's time to make a change, to make a new commitment to a new spiritual life or a new perspective on the spiritual life that you already have. And with the ideas of uh, discernment and burning away illusion, you also are understanding why you're making the decisions that you are. And the idea of fire, is very much connected to the idea of technology and thought. You know, thought is very um, capable of breaking things down into individual pieces. The way fire purifies and removes all the dross and the um, excess. The way fire can refine things and bring out the purity within something by burning away all the um, impurities within it. Like if you were smelting gold and you wanted to melt the metal and remove all the impurities from the surface. And the connection to familial and social bonds. Fire is something that people have gathered around since we were capable of handling fire without being afraid. Fire was something that brought people together around a fire to tell stories 
about heroes and their journeys, to share food and nourishment, you know, and then build connections. And, you know, fire also illuminated the night, extended the day, gave us more control so that we could spend our time the way that we chose to, to connect with others and stay warm, stay healthy. So there's a lot of ideas here that represent sort of uh, a cluster of things that we can explore on our on the 31st path, you know, as we look at our hero's journey and our commitment to a new sort of adventure, a new perspective on life, understanding our decisions and our thought processes and why we do the things that we do and our connections with other people and looking at the things that really matter and burning off the things that simply distract us that are old habits and old ways of doing things that end up hampering us in the long run. Which brings us back again and again and again to the idea of the new adventure, the new path, the new um, adventure that we're going to go on that's going to improve all of these things and give clarity to who we are and our connection to others and our place in the world, you know, where our power comes from. And so, um, would it be correct to think that in focusing our attention and our awareness and our magical activities on these things that we're assisting all of those energies to happen for us, that we're invite that it's an invitation for those energies to come forth in our lives. Yes, it's an invitation for all those energies to come forth and to not put energy into things that drain us of uh, of vitality and focus and power by distracting us well, old patterns that we were in, we built up that at one time might have been helpful that might have been good coping me mechanisms now are just drawing current on our circuitry and distracting us from the things that we need to do and being present you know being stuck in path uh, loops and storylines that now need to be burned away because we're making a new story, a new story of our new adventure, of our new commitment, and our new way of living. It's very exciting mm -hmm. to think that this is what we're doing. We're on this sacred path of the uh, of mythology that we've seen echoed throughout all of all of civil. Everybody, everybody's had something to say about this, and that we have a method for intentionally manifesting that in our life yeah, basically with awareness with awareness okay okay um i'm i'm still a little confused about the connection between changing and trend there so you've got changing and you've got thought and you've got family and those things are kind of really they don't they're they're it's an interesting way of putting together ideas you know because changing and processing and chemistry and burning and are all like theory and i would think of thought as being more airy and family as being more earthy how is it that these are all kind of coming together in that way? Because it, it's bringing a lot of things into awareness. So the idea of thought and the Hebrew letter Shin, which looks sort of like a, holding your hand up and with three letters, the little yodes at the top. It represents uh, yes. the candles, right? But the name Shin is literally tooth in Hebrew. And what a tooth does is it breaks things down so that you can absorb them, so that you can take in nourishment. You know, you chop something up with your teeth so that you can swallow it and then it can come into your body and nourish you and make you healthy. Now the intellect, according to this tradition, has a similar property. If you look at something and try to take it in all at once, it can be confusing and overwhelming. 
but the intellect can break things down into component stages and separate the chaff from the grain and the important from the unimportant and the truth from the fiction or the, the, the distraction. So intellectually coming into awareness so that you can handle the big process, breaking it down into small pieces, your experiences, the ideas and things that come to you and the realizations and the goals and things that you have set before you, breaking them down into smaller pieces so you can handle them and you can take them within you and accomplish them. And the idea of familial and societal bonds comes to the idea of fire and heat and the communal fires of old. When people developed their minds enough that they could control fire, it allowed them to spend evenings around a fire, telling stories, cooking food. So again, the idea of nourishment comes back in and sharing with each other and connection. Um, and of course, improving their health because they were kept warm in the winter. That it's hearth. Hearth. Health is, that, is, is health a key word for this? Because I didn't find a whole lot of health. Yeah, I don't, yeah, health isn't really a, a key word other than that the heat in your body can kill kill things off and Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. But it's the connection to others, discernment, burning away of illusions. Like if you have a problem with somebody, how much of that is something that you're caught in yourself? It's always something you're caught in yourself with, by the way. Right. <laughs> the answer to that is all of it. Okay. So, so I wanted to um, I wanted to add a couple of thoughts. So one is the, about the the tooth. You know, um, I was reading that the tooth is a a bone that lives for a very long time. Um, it doesn't decompose as quickly as some of the other parts of the body. So um, it has this kind of uh, persistence as a physical entity. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also wanted to point out the idea that as you, you know, when we're, when we're talking about, we've talked a lot about how our unconscious um, storage, the dysfunctionally stored information that we have in our sub and unconscious, the traumas that we haven't fully processed, the experiences that haven't really fully made sense that are creating the emotional distress that comes up. That's what's actually being transmuted and processed are these old unresolved things that can range all the way from horrific traumas to just societal and cultural programming and imprinting and, and coming into our own authenticity, um, that there's a process of going through that. And uh, the last piece of that process, the very last step is to pull it through the body and through the emotions and into the realm of thought, yes, awareness. right? And even then speech would be one step farther because if you can articulate something, then you've really brought it down into, I guess the realm of Malkuth, the realm of experience, the realm of shared experience and shared understanding and storyline. You know, it's like what I refer to as the flowers. So if we're working at it from a therapeutic context, you don't want to deal with that up there because that's the end result and not the core. But here what it's saying is they want you to get to a place where you can process it until it can become clear, conscious, in awareness, in thought, um, subject to discernment you know, a clear, balanced discernment. When our senses, as we discussed earlier, when our senses are muted and we can't perceive reality with accuracy, right? We can't be even in our full senses. If you wonder if you can perceive reality with full accuracy, then pay attention to the senses with memory and recall, body sensation being part of that. Um, and see how much you can recall, so how much you can pick up from now and from memories in the past. All that is drawing it into thought and see what kind of resistance you feel in that process. But what we're doing here is we're opening up that channel. Yes. 
opening up the channel to have a new way of being, a new adventure, new awareness, and not to try to turn away from it like Luke Skywalker did, but to accept the opportunity to have this new adventure, this call to adventure, this new aeon, as Crowley put it. A new aeon. Mm -hmm. Great. You ready? Mm -hmm. So here is a slide from one of my grimoires that has the symbol for fire and Anakian. Um, on the left side, there's the Anakian hierarchy. This, they absolutely loved it. And you can see, um, can I use the mouse? Mm -hmm. Here's the symbol for the sun. They can't see the mouse. Okay. There's a symbol for the sun, a little round gold circle with the dot in the middle. And next to it is the name of the Anakian senior that we're going to experiment with tomorrow. But this is the symbol of fire. Um, you can see it looks a lot like a sun with lots of yodes radiating out from it. And this is above the tablet of fire um, and Anakian symbolism. Thought we would include it. Do you want to share the sound with us? The sound? Yeah. It's written down on the page. You want me to read that off? We can see the mouse. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is the name for the knocking senior we were discussing, and uh, it's pronounced Edel Prana. This is the name for the spirit of fire, basically. Well, no, this is the Anakian um, Tetragrammaton. Ehe Nube. It's the four letter name based off of um, the first letter of each row in the table of union. But basically, it's Tetragrammaton, the four letter name of the source of Hashem, but for Anakian. And then this is the Itome here, the, which represents the entity, the spiritual entity for spirit of fire. Up until now, we've experienced um, different combinations of elements, but the Itome represents the ace. So it represents spirit of fire source of fire, but very specifically the spiritual aspect of fire. The next line is um, the secret holy name for the element of fire, a name composed of three, four, and five letters. Um, and that name is Oipe Te Ia'a Pe Te Oke'i. And as you can imagine, since it's fire, it represents both the um, the, the the three uh, modes of the um, of the zodiac. The what's the first one? Fixed cardinal, mutable, and fire. Right. So the first is the cardinal zodiac, then the fixed, and the last name is for the mutable. But then beyond that, this is a spiritual ruler, and then we get into the seniors. And this is our target for Monday. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Or tomorrow. All right. You ready? Yeah. Um, okay. So here's some notes I have on fire. And it's a good idea to review fire and be thinking about it because that is a, probably, the, probably the core aspect of the 31st path is considering about passing through fire. Um, so fire, it represents the highest of the four Kabbalistic worlds, which is Atzaluth, at which is the archetypal world of pure spirit, and the supernals, Fire is a force that is swift and violent in action, but soon spent. Um, it's active, 
and in the Greek nomenclature, it is both hot and dry, whereas, of course, water would be cold and wet, which would be its opposite. Um, and of course, here we mentioned before, Beitame is the name for a spirit of fire. And in this system, fire is usually associated with wisdom and knowledge. And I would hesitate to use those exact terms because it's really more of an intuitive knowing, an inspiration, a spark. Um, the words knowledge and wisdom to me represent something that we think and understand in ourselves and our minds and our thought, which seem a little bit more towards airy. But think of fire as inspiration and intuition. When you know something, but you can't quite put it into words yet. It's that sort of idea. So now for our next ritual that we will be all doing um, two weeks together, we are going to do the elemental fire of fire. Now, fire of fire is, of course, the king of wands. And we'll look at some of those cards in a, a little bit. And its name, the god name pair is Razodi Onar and, and Razod Ephim. And there's a, a few um, attributions that go along with it. It's a power of vision, inspiration, gnosis, inspiration, insight, ideals, ethics, moral guidance, breakthrough, reformation of past opinions and beliefs. Now we chose this because not only does it go along with the path of uh, judgment um, as being fiery, but it's very similar. That fire of fire energy allows us to make breakthroughs and understanding and get away from our past opinions and beliefs and sort of burn away illusion and have greater discernment and understanding, but also inspiration, insight to be able to see through things. The idea of like a very bright fire, a very bright fire that reveals and burns away the things that are no longer necessary and refines. So the elemental represents an emotional experience um, that goes along with the path of judgment, whereas the path of judgment itself will probably be a lot more intellectual, um, a lot more meaningful to our minds. But here is a good experience that we can have to prepare ourselves for the path. And so that will be the elemental that we will do in a couple of weeks. You have some? What is that Hebrew right there? Ash is a Hebrew name for fire. From my notes. And the sixth call refers to? Uh, in Anakian, there are, um, depending on how you look at it, a, num a number of calls, a number of prayers written in Anakian. And the sixth call is the one that ap ac activates the tablet of fire, the, the square tablet of letters that we get the different names off of. It flicks it on, so to speak, it activates it. And so when you work with fire energy, the sixth call is the one that you use in order to activate the tablet, which acts as sort of a grand talisman um, for all the entities whose names who are on it, which are in the hundreds, really, once you drill down into it. So what strikes me is um, the, with the previous discussion of the path and how fire operated on the path with regard to thought and the things that we said about thought um, and how this is different. We're looking at fire in the Anakian system. And so we're looking at similar processes that are expressed in slightly different ways and um, how we're kind of pulling together. It feels to me like we're pulling together just these huge, powerful currents of energy mm -hmm. that have all this potential to go in different directions, like a fire hose, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it's offering us just a pretty nice spectrum of opportunity for energetic development. Yes, and one of the things that to keep in mind 
is that an elemental, when we're working with elements, mm. it's going to be an emotional experience. But when we okay. get to the past, it'll bring up a much higher level of, of experiential where it'll get more intellectual, okay. more involved with thought and archetypes. So an emotional experience of thought? Yes. An emotional experience of thought. Of the fire of thought. The fire of thought. So you can think about being inspired. Not you can't okay. necessarily put it completely into words yet, but you feel inspiration. You feel you like, oh, you know something. So it's like intuition. So when an artist, for instance, like feels like Ah, I got an idea. I have something. I need to get to my my workbook and my so I can start sketching. Okay. It's at that point. So it's before. So it's like creativity before creativity is is born. Right. Yes. Okay. But also burning away and clarifying old patterns. What's left? So that might be a little uncomfortable. Yes, fire, fire can be very uncomfortable. I know a lot of people who are experiencing that violent fire right now. It can be very uncomfortable. A lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. In my 20 years of observing psychological patterns, it's just off the chain at an all-time high. But doing a magical ritual and consciously taking control of the energy and working with it can mitigate the more unpleasant aspects of it if we choose to. Mm. We can ask it okay. to give it to us in a kinder, more gentler, more enlightened way. Because we ask the angels for their wisdom because they can't resist that. In which case, we can uh, control some of that and have it be less unpleasant. Mm -hmm. uh, although some people will want to have it be uh, difficult, challenging. But it doesn't have to be. And that's why we work with these energies consciously when with awareness so we can modulate their effects and uh, mitigate the more uncomfortable parts as we move forward with the more positive aspects. The amount of change that we make will be in direct proportion to um, the amount of intensity that we're willing to allow ourselves to experience. Right. And that intensity can either be interpreted uh, with the more resistance that you put into it, the more uncomfortable it's going to feel, the more that you just allow things to unfold and take advantage of the opportunities as they make themselves present to you, the more it's going to feel like inspiration and glitter flicking across our screen and um, excitement and, and uh, energy and passion and... Yes. Poetry, being inspired, inspired speech could be something that could come out of it. And being able to put your deepest feelings into words. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is another page out of the grimoire. And um, it represents the sigil associated with um, Arzo Dionar and Arzo Epim the fiery part of fire. And so, so as a mean of explanation, here it's like how I like keep track of it, fire symbol, triangle upwards, fire, fire. The name of the angel written across the top and the keyword written across the bottom. Keyword here being truth furnace. Truth's furnace. Mm -hmm. And uh, I made another page, I'll show you in a bit, with the sigil um, a little drawn a little bit more clearly. So the idea is that you would make your, if you would like, be in the next two weeks, make your own version of this sigil. This one has a lot of art and things that I've added to the background, this sort of tornado of fiery energy representing how I how it uh, manifests for me in the temple. And of course, this is gold leaf representing the permanence and, uh, and also just uh, beautiful. So here's its name written across the top here. And this is the little 
prayer written in order to uh, invoke the angel itself. Um, and I would read it as Neiso, um, Neiso, Be, excuse me, Beita, Nanka, Zir, Va, Oan, or Lo, Dinar, Neiso, O, Krimi, Ge, Lu, I, Yahe, which translates as come. I have spoken of you. You are truth's furnace. Come and sing your song of honor. And so that's a little prayer uh, that was written by me, inspiration in the circle, um, doing uh, rituals uh, to invoke this entity. And uh, it's taken from the, some, some of it's taken from the knock-in call that goes along with it. Um, what's that? Oh, the six, that's just to remind me that it's the six call. Okay. The six call is the one that activates the fire tablets. Okay. So here is, um, another version It's probably easier to see of the sigil for the, the fire fire, the king of wands. Um, if you wanted to make your own talisman for when we do the ritual in two weeks, you would basically draw this on a piece of paper to the best of your ability. Artistic ability is more important than accuracy in these things. Um, creativity and uh, artistic ability and just simply willing to, to, to do it is more important than doing it with with uh, a great deal of accuracy. These aren't um, dangerous entities. They're very friendly and kind. And um, having this uh, sigil drawn when we do the ritual, you'll be able to charge it and connect it to the ritual that we perform in time and space and be able to go back to that space whenever you wish. Um, I would suggest um, drawing this out and maybe we can post it on the... Well, we're going to post the video. Okay. So they'll have the video. And if you wanna post, we could post the sigil too. Um, but you know, when you say that it doesn't need to be accurate, I think what you're doing is you're giving an allowance for- um, People's drawing abilities. People drawing abilities. But that doesn't mean that you can replace the sigil and the points that are on the sigil with whatever the heck you want. Um, that doesn't mean that you can create your own sigil, that is your own thing that you think is going to be what you want it to be, because that's not, that's contacting something that exists in your imagination. And what we want to do is we want to contact something that exists in the collective consciousness. Collective unconscious, yes. And that is actually going to call up the energy of what we're trying to do. And so if somebody just tries to do a random sigil, then there probably isn't going to dial them in. Yeah, to, you'll get a random effect. You know, you can play with your radio and turn the knob to wherever you want it to be, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be on the same station that we're going to be on when we do the ritual. Yes, this sigil was, first I draw it on a um, triangle that has the Anakian letters that was given to me by the angels a long time ago in a previous ritual, mm -hmm. a previous series of rituals. And then once it's drawn in, we invoke the entity and get its approval. And in some place, times they give changes. Like for instance, this sun emblem to the side was something that it wanted me to add. And then the, the vortex that you had in the other one on the previous slide was added, right? The, okay, in the previous slide, the vortex, let's yeah. go back to that. I, this is the energies as I see them in the temple. And so it was added, I added Wait it. Wait a minute, don't, when you say this, you mean this specifically. This was something that you added. And you can also right? see that there's two triangles. It's, maybe it's hard to see. Because no, it's hard to see. What, hard do you to see. Say, what did you do? 
there's a triangle of fiery energy going up here. Oh, that's the background coloration. Uh, fiery energy down here. Okay. And then where they meet, there's an explosion radiating outward okay. of energy. And see, that is the background pattern. The background pattern. So, but the basic pattern in gold, where you went to that point, where you went to this point, this point, this point, this point, and then the ways that you went up and down, you can change those. So, these points are what are very important, but you can embellish with detail, you can embellish with background color, you could draw things on the outside of your sigil and make it your own. Those are the ways that you can be creative, but this particular piece. Right, so if we go to the next slide, the pieces that I've written, drawn in in black, are the core sigil that has been approved by the entity. Okay. If you want to add coloration and decoration around it, and when I say that, artistic ability is more important than accuracy. I'm encouraging you to do the best you can and not worry about it so much. You know, a lot of people can be very intimidated by having to draw something. Yeah. I'm saying don't be intimidated. Just, your best effort is good enough. So that'll be fine. Yeah. Very good. All right, so now we're going to look at first some um, tarot cards that go along with the elemental fire of fire. So here we have Crowley's absolutely gorgeous cards, and he, he uses the knight instead of a king, which kind of makes sense to me because knights are in motion and kings are fiery and very active. You can see the fiery energy in the card. And then my torn up old classic uh, Rider weight deck with the king, with his lion for Leo and his salamanders representing all his fiery energy. And the, why are your cards torn up? Uh, they were nibbled by rabbits back in the day. <laughs> and book two, the purple book? Maybe. The uh, purple the, grimoire? The purple book is just really old and yeah, it might have been nibbled, but it also might have just been worn because it's just so old. I had actually cropped that photo. <laughs> it didn't work. Okay, go ahead. And here are some more of Alana's Kings of Wands. Oh, the Tarot of Ceremonial Magic by the Ciceros. Um, the Herbal Tarot, I have these in the references at the end. The Herbal Tarot, I thought you guys might enjoy seeing just some different representations. Cinnamon. Cinnamon is associated. This is what the, whoever wrote the Herbal Tarot deck believed that cinnamon was associated with this energetic. So you can think about the taste and the organoleptic and the action of cinnamon. And um, and then Sally Ann and uh, Louis Sally Ann Glassman and Louis Martinez um, Voodoo Tarot New Orleans Voodoo Tarot deck the Knight the King of Wands um, the suit is the Hungan and Petro Fire of Fire and it shows them with a very specific type of drum that is only used by um, the, the Petro, people who are in the Petro group and are affiliated with that, they're considered very fiery. There are other fiery groups too, but this is what they represented. Pretty cool. All right. So these five cards we've shown you are for the fire, fire elemental ritual that we'll be doing in a couple weeks. Right. Here are some representations for the card judgment or the aeon that's associated with the, the path that we're doing, the call to adventure. The 31st path. Mm -hmm. So in Crowley's deck, this symbolism of the new aeon goes to his, a lot of its ideas of the prophecies of the new aeon. Now Crowley believed uh, through his inspiration that there was uh, this was a third aeon 
first was the aeon of the father, uh, then the of the mother, and then this is the child. The other way around, the mother, then the father. Mother, then the father. Okay, yeah. and then this is the child of the two. Um, and so you can see Hapak rotates, Babe and Lotus with the finger in his mouth, Rahur in the background, Horus the Elder, Newt being the sky. Shin. Yeah, of course. And you have the Shin letter here. You can see I was holding it before with the three fingers. And then the upward pointing triangle, of course, for the symbol for fire. The classic writer weight goes back to Christian symbolism, the judgment. Um, people waking up to a new day, being called by the horn of Gabriel. Uh, the symbolism of Crowley's guard is, is quite excellent, but those specific to his um, particular ideas. But they're both uh, quite beautiful, I think. And then going back to the other decks, we see the Cicero version, the shin, the horn, the call, the male, the female. Oh, I got these inverted. With the herbal duck, you, you see that the plant that's associated with it is golden seal. A very powerful healing plant. Which is a very powerful healing plant. You know, uh, cinnamon is a bark. The, what's used is the bark. But with golden seal, what's used is the root. And very interestingly, what we get as cinnamon is rarely cinnamon. Um, it's very hard to actually get cinnamon because it's hard to cultivate and hard to get. Um, there are other plants that are very similar that are typically sold as cinnamon instead. And golden seal is also a very rare plant. It's highly endangered and um, it doesn't grow very well in this climate, but in the climates that it does grow, people are trying to intentionally plant golden seal because there's a lack of it. There's an extreme lack of golden seal, this very healing plant mm -hmm. for diseases of our time. Golden seal is a powerful antiviral and cinnamon is also um, a powerful um, expectorant for, and it can be used for respiratory ailments as well. And then in the New Orleans Voodoo Tarot deck, what we have here represented is the ancestors. And so this is the energy that connects us to every, all of our family, which uh, Louis Martinet says is all sentient beings are our ancestors, all of our family who have ever come before us and who will ever come after us, this endless stream of um, being connected directly to every, uh, the course of life, the course of sentience, the course of human existence and experience. And what we see, what they use to represent that kind of interestingly, you can see the skin of a snake. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Let's go back. That's the reference for the deck. Um, but I want you to see this. It takes a sec. Is it going to go back for me? If I push it again, it might go back to you. Okay, so we see the skin of a snake. That there's this long stream. And what are they throwing? They're throwing beads at Mardi Gras. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? And what's this person doing? They're making the sign of silence. And you see what kind of cloak this person has on, on the top of them. And so this endless stream of things, of, of some sort of consciousness that we can tap into, this endless never-ending flow that is immediately available to us. And of course, the ancestors are there waiting for us. They are our family, our direct family, as well as our infinite family. But first we connect with our direct family. And that's kind of one of the first things that I was ever taught to do um, in my limited voodoo journey was connecting in to our 
our own paths, our traditions. So that's it, I guess. So here's the references for the tarot decks that we used. So that you have them, the Golden Dawn Magical Tarot. Love to add Lon Milo's to this. And, and the Herbal Tarot by, oh, by Michael Tierra, who's a really, I don't know Candace Canton, but Michael Tierra's, you know, a really cool herbalist with a lot of respect to him, who does a lot of, um, yeah, I think, he, I think he does some interesting things in his work, some more metaphysical sorts of works with his herbalism and the voodoo tarot, of course. And that's the end of our presentation. So thank you all very much. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.